So uh, this is DAC to the future. DAC is um, the acronym for Decentralized Autonomous Company. So it's kind of how we see at Metis the evolution of the DAO structure. So if you'll go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so uh, this is kind of what we're, I'm going to go over with you today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my background and then meet us as our network, how you can build on meet us, and then what we're looking for in the bounties for this hackathon. Next up. Thanks. So like I said, I'm um, the education programs manager for meet us and for crypto chicks. So uh, CryptoTix is our partnering nonprofit, and Metis is the network um, started all by our CEO, Elena. So my job is to teach people who don't really know anything about blockchain a little bit about blockchain. Um, and, and my entire career has been as a teacher. So I look forward to like learning from the people who take these workshops just as much as I look forward to teaching you about what Metis does. You can head on to the next one. Cool. So Metis is a layer two optimistic rollup platform. So we offer the security and decentralization of Ethereum with faster and cheaper transactions. Um, we have native storage. And by the end of this quarter, um, which is the end of this month, our transaction fees are going from a few dollars steadily down to cents. So um, it's getting cheaper and cheaper to transact on the Metis network. Um, you have native storage and it's easy to deploy. So one of the things that we really want to focus on at Metis is helping people who are unfamiliar with the space um, understand how blockchain could support the things that they're working on. We're trying to on-ramp more Web 2 businesses into the Web 3 space and really kind of bring the blockchain to the people. Uh, next slide, please. Awesome. So we have so far built a, a robust and vibrant ecosystem on the Metis network. Um, we have DEXs and a whole host of DeFi projects. Um, we are also working with some education organizations. We have community um, support. We're offering uh, an NFT bridge uh, coming up in the next week or so. And um, we've really just kind of rounded out coming at this from all different angles. And we're really trying to bring more Web2 businesses um, onto the blockchain with some functionalities that would provide all of the decentralization and security elements of Web3 with some of the enterprise functions that are necessary in a Web2 space. Next slide, please. All right, so one of the things that allows us to really build that robust ecosystem is um, our Builder Rewards Program. So dApps that deploy on our network receive 30% of their transaction fees um, back to them at the end of every month. This is a very simple little form. Um, you just fill it out, put in your wallet address, and then at the end of every month, we're giving 30% of those transaction fees back to you. So that's really allowed us to provide ongoing support to the apps on our network. And instead of just um, maybe an upfront investment, we're able to provide continued revenue. And that also has created an opportunity for dApps at our network to kind of partner with one another and feed off of the work that they're doing together. Um, it's been really great so far in supporting the longevity of projects. Uh, next up, please. So I, I shared a doc um, with Paul and the team uh, that has some of the details of how to build on Metis with some helpful links in that. So we can make sure that everyone has access to that so that you can head to our website and see our integration documents. And there's a couple other like 
how to and helper videos in that document. So as you're moving through the process, you can reach out to our support team on Telegram and Discord if you're coming up on any issues um, and then just kind of read through that that information to help you with the actual building process. Next up. Great. So uh, I usually offer this workshop in person, <laughs> so it's a little different um, virtually, but this is the part where we interact with one another. And I think this is really important because I'm not some stage sage on the stage. I don't come to you assuming that I know all of the answers. Um, I think that we can build more awesome stuff when we collaborate. So I want to take a second because I, I went to East Denver a few weeks ago, and I noticed that when I talked to people about what DAOs were, um, everybody seemed to have a different definition. And so I wanted to give you all a moment to just think about what the key characteristics of a DAO are in your mind. And then I'd like some of us to share out in in the group here. So uh, let's, I, I'm a former school teacher, so I'm going to set a timer, true classroom management style. And uh, I'm going to set a timer for, let's say, 30 seconds, and then I'll ask people to start sharing out in the chat. So go ahead. Your think time starts now. About 15 seconds to go. Okay, awesome. Um, can does anybody want to volunteer to take it out? Um, just tell us like some of the key characteristics that you think of when you consider DAOs, the things that stand out. Go ahead. Um, it's hard for me to see everybody on the screen here. You're all so small. Uh, exponent, go ahead. I'm happy to volunteer. Yeah. So I think that a DAO is a digital native organization, digital native uh, way for people to communicate for productive output. So it's coordination of resources, coordination of visions, coordination of maybe capital um, for, for some productive output. Productive can be just to be happy. And so digital native less and basically the jurisdiction less so jurisdiction is the blockchain itself um, rather than like legacy jurisdictions of nation states that we all know are going to be obsolete um, yeah this is my uh, my take on it very cool thank you i appreciate that does anybody else want to throw in their hat into that explanation hey sorry um i just created a workshop chat above as a text channel. So anyone feel free to drop your thoughts there. That also might help Ashley uh, coordinate this. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, I see um, decentralized and flat structure. Um, I think about a digital network or group of people that come together to collaborate on a unified goal. Uh, some other people are chatting here or typing their response. So I'll see what that's about. This is awesome. Yeah, so I think um, when I when I've hosted this in the past, I heard account um, and it's been really interesting for me being pretty new to the space. I joined the Meetus team in January um, to see like what the possibilities are in a DAO, but also. Um, just from the outside looking in, noticing some limitations. So we're going to get to that in a moment. Um, but Paul, can you go ahead and send us over to the next slide? Sure. Yeah, I'm seeing here no leader. Decisions are made collectively between the members. That's great. Okay. 
So these are some of the main points that I think I heard the most often when I talk to people about this. There's no central leadership, um, exactly like um, someone in the chat said. It's a concept where organizations don't have a leader, but they made their decisions based on token holders. Um, so they're governed by smart contracts, right? Like there's not a, a whole lot of centralized like shot calling which is the point um and it's meant to kind of foster this community and coordination and a collaborative environment and usually it's built for investments people pull their funds together and they use them for whatever resources they they see fit um so let's go to the next slide please Cool. So I want you to think about the things that you love about DAOs. And this is a good one too, because um, again, everyone has their differences, but usually when you think about the things that you love, you start to think about the limitations um, just because that's kind of how our brains work. So uh, take another 30 seconds. You can either come off mute and share at the end of the sync time or put your ideas in the chat. I want you to tell me the things that you love the most, not just what the functionalities are, but like what do you think is has the most potential? So another 30 seconds for you to gather your thoughts. All right. Um, I see some people still typing here in the uh, in the chat box, but if anybody just wants to come off mute, you are welcome to do that. Okay, I see. I love the flag structure. It's constantly evolving as people's ideas develop, and so do the possibilities. I love that. Anything else? Yes. Um, so as one who contributed to a few DAOs in the past, one thing I love about DAOs in my experience is the ability to uh, just join the community and then observe kind of what work needs to be done um, from the team and then being able to just immediately own a piece of work that needs to be done, get the work done, get paid for it without requiring any form of entry into the team. So um, I really love that because it really enables um, ambitious people just to get started with work and not have to worry about, you know, an interview process or whatever. And it's really much more about proof of worth rather than the needs go through initial barrier and then actually start to do work. And so I think that for people that are used to working asynchronous, a a async and um, really used to owning stuff and just getting the ball rolling, DAOs is fascinating. It really has that extra flexibility that I really enjoy. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. I've been noticing yeah. that as well. Um, the Web3 space offers this, this new kind of perspective on how we consider our work and how we consider our contributions to projects that are bigger than ourselves. So no longer are we tied to working for one company or one corporation and really devoting our 40 hours a week or whatever that may be to one organization and one cause. Now we have the opportunity to use specifically the gifts that we want to offer and the services that we want to provide to more than one organization if we want. We can sort of kind of create a portfolio of work um, in, a, in a way that is filling to us, but is also serving communities, which is, I really am excited about that. Looks like Exponent said, uh, what I love about DAOs is that they're unlocking long tail creative expression for scalable productive output, like building Uber won't need to happen with too many lawyers and be based in San Francisco, rather people from different countries that were otherwise not having much access to the venture ecosystem can now participate using data, data, digital native coordination tools. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's another great point. Um, not needing to be tied to a certain location. There's no like gatekeeping involved with access to these projects and being able to contribute. Um, yeah, it's it's really exciting. So if you'll go to the next slide for me. One moment, sorry. That's okay. There we go. Thank you. So um, yeah, this is all a kind of in line with some of the things that I heard pretty consistently when asking people about what they love about DAOs. They love the accessibility, that there are no barriers to entry, that everyone can participate, um, that it's inclusive. Um, you can contribute a range of services and products and um, still like be involved in a way that is true to you, but also is meeting a need. Um, you can do it from anywhere and uh, you can get rewards. You can get compensated or otherwise receive some sort of uh, governance leverage or anything along those lines in exchange for what you do. And it's transparent, which is great. Um, we want to support that decentralized mission above all else when we come to this space. So that's our focus at Metis as well. Um, now let's go on to the next slide, please. I hope y'all are uh, enjoying the talking because I'm going to make you do it like three more times. If we were in person, I would make you do the chicken dance. So be glad that you're at home. <laughs> Okay, so now I want you to think about what frustrates you about DAOs. So um, any of the limitations that you feel or in participating in DAOs, what are some things that you notice need improvement or are kind of like, like otherwise impeding your efficiency? So, so take a, a little bit to think about that. I'm going to set my timer again. And uh Think of your response and then we'll come off mute or share in the chat. Awesome. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to get a quorum on a decision. Okay, yeah. DAOs can be too asynchronous. They're too chaotic. Hard to ensure consistent productivity over a long period of time, for sure. Um, anybody want to come off mute or add anything else here? Yes, I want to add. I'm typing slow. Um, yeah, yeah. Take your time. So not so much. So not so much about that. Like I think fantastic. They're like just groundbreaking invention that like is phenomenal. What I think is something that frustrates though is the false, like the false kind of a narrative that there is no like that. Actually, in DAOs, the onus of being a leader is on everyone rather than that there is no leader. And leadership is something to be sell. And I think that sometimes like there is this misconception of like, ah, oh, we're just vibing. There's no accountability. And this is a wrong, like a wrong premise, rather the, the, the other way around. Instead of having just one leader to rely on, everyone needs to have more accountability and to be much more um, kind of like cultivating leadership skills um, and, and be much more, you know, like owning, which I think this is the real, you know, the shift in narrative needs to be like from leader less to actually leader full rather. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, I guess, like, uh, something that frustrates me is that the, the conversation is not framed that way in the culture in DAOs, but I think that the DAOs that succeed are the DAOs that, that have this quite well instilled in their culture. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great point. I think, um, I love the way you phrase that leader less, but really leader full. Like everyone really has to own the mission of the organization. Everyone has to own their contribution and almost treat it as if like, okay, this is my project. And uh, if I'm not going to take ownership of something, then how can I collaborate to make sure that 
you know, we're, we're making the best effort toward reaching our goal. Um, let's see, I see in the chat, uh, speed to execute due to bureaucracy. So there's a lot of like waiting on governance decisions, votes and whatnot before anything is actually taken care of. Leadership needs to be, um, it needs to actually occur or nothing gets done. So someone either needs to take charge or people need to be really responsible and own their own work. Um, you can get burnout, which I think is interesting. I mean, you know, one of the strengths is that you can contribute to multiple projects at a time, but it also that can lead to your brain being in so many different places. And um, fun fact from teaching is people can really only pay attention for as ever however many minutes as they are old but um in my personal opinion i think that caps at about 20 minutes and um as you start working on something like a specific project the more you have to switch tasks um the less attention you're able to give so um multitasking and being a freelancer in that way can really decrease your productivity um and then commitment and role and ownership roles in the DAOs. Those are all excellent answers. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Cool. So, yeah, just like what you what you all shared uh, in a, in different words, um, some things that I've heard from people are that there's some le measure of inefficiency um, just because if we've got to vote on everything or if no one's in charge, if everyone's in charge, no one's in charge, like who's getting things done, who's taking ownership. There's also this like apathy. Um, if you don't really care about a certain issue or maybe you just don't know, maybe you don't understand a certain mechanism or you don't have any experience in a certain um, aspect of what the project is doing. Um, then you might not be able to contribute anything meaningful in that instance. And then beyond that, um, I really like to talk about trust in this space um, because I think you know, the word trustless gets thrown around a lot. And then while I definitely understand the concept of um, having this autonomous piece in these organizations where smart contracts are governing the decision-making processes, um, there is still a, a great level of trust, not necessarily in that I have to trust you when I um, complete a transaction or I have to trust the other people in my organization. But when we're talking about receiving investment or when we're inviting new people into this space, um, we are asking for a great amount of trust because when I don't understand something fully, I'm trusting the person who's explaining it to me to give me the clearest picture possible. And when I haven't been able to review the code myself, then I'm tr trusting the people who wrote the code for these um, contracts, for these mechanisms. So trust is still very present. Um, and I think often in DAOs, it's kind of like pushed aside. And, you know, it's no secret that in the crypto space sometimes there's a poor reputation for um, not not being trustworthy. So I think if we can shift our focus to developing trust, not just with on-chain transparency, but with accountability, um, that could go a long way in our DAO structure. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so this that is taken from uh, Vitalik's blog, so not mine, <laughs> but um, if you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, it has DAOs, um, kind of like at the crosshairs of humans operating at the edge, but automation mm -hmm. at the center. So um, we're not actually like initiating things, but we're, we're handling things on the outside, which I think is great. Now, that's very helpful. Um, when we look at a couple of humans being involved, at, but not necessarily having their finger on every single choice or like having control over everything. So we move into the next slide. Um, so we kind of envision DAX as 
something similar to that for DAOs in that humans at the edge and automation at the center, um, but adding a little bit more to what's a pretty flat structure. So if we want to consider transparency as a strength of both DAOs and DAX, we might compare them to um, more opaque platforms that we're quite familiar with, like Twitter and Discord. So Twitter, for example, um, I don't really know what goes on behind the scenes. And it's similar to a DAO in that it's flat, but there's no way for me to know like if Twitter's like deleting tweets or, or sending certain things to me. And Discord is a little bit different, a little similar, more similar to a DAC in that um, we can share, um, but we can also assign roles and give certain permissions to people within the organization. So we're looking at creating more functionalities for DAOs at Metis that would allow us to have more permissions, per, um, say, being able to designate specific roles, being able to automate processes of traditional enterprises, um, but still putting the right choices in the hands of the right people. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. So let's move on to the next one. Okay. So in DAOs right now, we have um, the opportunity for voting and for governance, and we're building reputation power. But in DAX, um, we see the opportunities to be a little more expansive, um, still harnessing those same elements of DAOs, but then adding on organizational roles, um, and then typical functions like how can I make a quick donation or finance um, we can offer permissions to who can edit a smart contract um, or who's going to manage a certain project. How are we going to facilitate efficient communication? Um, so all of the problems and the frustrations that we discussed, um, building out structures that would allow us to implement some accountability and some clarity and direction on who's taking care of what and how we're working together in a transparent and collaborative way. Um, so, for example, if I'm holding, um, let's say that I'm working for an organization that wants to fight human trafficking in Thailand, I want to be able to assign duties and roles and permissions to people in my organization who have an understanding of fundraising, um, but then I want to have people on my team with different responsibilities who maybe understand what it's like to work on the ground in Thailand and have a, a better feel for what the community is like and how things get done in local government. And I'm not going to expect the same type of um, contribution and the same type of permission and even autonomy from both of those people. I mean, they've got different expertise. Um, so let's move on to the next slide, please. Yeah, so this is just a little bit more on some examples that we see for adding more structure and functionality to DAOs. Um, and this is part of our roadmap at Metis. So by the end of the year, we're hoping to have all of these fleshed out. Right now, you can launch a DAC on Metis, and we have some. Um, financial functionalities there. Um, but as we build out the framework, we want to be able to create more more um, roles and permissions, um, offer some automation for payroll and HR functions, um, and then streamline some more task management and communication. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I want you, I want to take, this is the last time I'm going to ask you to think, think and share. So um, get ready to, to, to be done with that. Um, I am going to ask you to share on industries or sectors or even just specific interests that you think um, would be helpful in this. And this is not even necessary me anything, but to start considering you know, if there's anyone in the space right now that you might want to team up with um, as you work toward our bounties in this hackathon. So thinking about any ideas that you might have that would support 
some use cases for DAX structure or ideas that you have for how you might want to build that out, you can come off mute and, and talk with the, the other builders that are here. And while you are considering, let's see, DAX is defined by Ashley, seem like the natural progression of DAOs in regards to the corporate space to answer these frustrations by defining specialization. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much our focus. So we really want to be able to offer decentralization to traditional companies. Um, and I think that especially for when I'm considering like government organizations and nonprofits, because that's kind of where most of my background is, I'm considering um, trust that's built and accountability that's supported by on-chain functions, but also not getting bogged down in um, voter apathy or um, bureaucracy of, of waiting on a certain vote or even um, the type of governance structures that we have when I know that somebody who's an expert in a field is going to make the right decision for my organization and they have an understanding of something that even though I may have the best intentions for my organization, I may not have the best picture of how to vote for it better um, or how to make a decision in that. Um, so what use cases come to mind? What specific causes or industries or sectors, what, what wheels are turning for you? I want to hear from you either in the chat or come off mute. Or you can just tap people and say, hey, I'm interested in what you're thinking on. I mean, I think any industry or uh, project that would benefit from, like, as you mentioned earlier, like, specialization of tasks would... Um, greatly benefit i mean there would be certain um members of the dao that might be more well equipped to handle certain tasks than others and having those roles predefined would probably help you know the community understand that um these tasks are going to get filled by xyz people so let's say that you have a dao that's trying to um help people with like cataracts in Nepal, you might have like a role defined as doctors that would um, form some surgeries in, ex in exchange for tokens that other members wouldn't be do. Yeah, that's a great example. That's, that's a great example. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to share before we move on? Cool. Well, the chat's still yes. open. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Don't be yeah, sorry. Well, I see. Um, yeah, no, no. I see DAOs. Uh, I get what in the DAX, especially DAOs. I see the potential for DAOs to start infiltrating or start being built around like physical locations. So for example, you know, we have counties in the US, we've got councils in Australia. So you have like federal state councils, right? Slash county counties. And they kind of um kind of manage all the administration of all the utilities um for or certain utilities for houses, etc. I actually see the possibility, I think we're already seeing it like in Wyoming, um, with legislation going through, seeing DAOs actually start kind of covering um you know the small administrative tasks required to maintain society um on the full space level so i really see DAOs starting to be implemented there i really see that happening um and of course that's probably the first stage where maybe the uh uh the risk of things falling apart is not that high because the responsibility is quite low um, where DAOs can actually start being implemented in MeetSpace and we can work out how that actually works and interface. And that could be like a five, 10 year experiment or whatever that is. And once we kind of all work out how to coordinate on that level, then we might be able to see DAOs and DAX actually forming kind of, you know, collections of counties or collections of councils, right? And I guess what this general idea builds up to, if you reiterate, get to a point of DAOs being able to form nation states, which I, I see the vision. I am skeptical 
of how we would coordinate all those moving parts. So it's probably going to be 20, 30 years away, but I definitely see DAOs and DAX kind of heading towards that vision of the future. Uh, I'm just a bit worried about the extra chaos that DAOs can bring, um, the coordination issues we haven't solved yet. And so I feel like we have a lot of chaos already in the world. So I don't know if we want more chaos. But I do think still we should be experimenting uh, and working out to see what value add they can add more uh, into society. So I kind of see that potentially happening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been really interesting to see through DAOs how quickly people can come together um, to su- to in support of something. Like, um, you know, no matter your political views, to see how quickly people were able to mobilize and like send funds to people in Ukraine or or what have you. Um, the space really offers that really responsive ability um we just have to like have the functions in place so that we can make moves when it's time to do that um all right so let's let's move on we're wrapping up here thank you all for sharing and like participating i really appreciate it um let's get on with it so the bounties we're looking for dow management tooling that kind of supports the dac vision that we have at Metis. Um, so anything that you can build to deliver value to a DAO and solutions that make participation easier or more transparent, um, more efficient or rewarding, all of those are going to be something that we're looking for. So um, there are some ideas there for anything that you're uh, rolling around in your brain, uh, just making sure that it's ready for um our, our layer two network. So uh, go to our last slide here and it'll have the details on it of our qualifications. So we'll award um, two, I mean, first and second place seems like you're the same, but <laughs> maybe we should just say two winners <laughs> of this bounty will receive $500. Um, and the project just needs to be open source needs to run on our Metis testnet and have a specific description and proof of concept. So it doesn't have to be, you know, a full wrapped up with a bow on it ready to go. Um, but having just like the minimal minimum viable product um, and be open source ready to run on the testnet um, will be good to go. And our Telegram and Discord is there for you if you have questions, you need support during that process. And once again, we'll make sure that you get access to those links that I shared um, with the Blockathon DAO team so that they can offer you those helpful links if you come across anything as you get started. Um, but that's all for me. I really appreciate your patience and uh, support during that beginning confusion there. Um, and if you have any questions, I will make myself available and do my best to answer them now. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Ashley or would like to expand? Yeah, are there is there any like theme of projects that you're looking for? Um, we're pretty open. Um, we so as long as it is supporting like functionality on a DAO, we're into it. So let your freak flags fly. Do whatever you want. <laughs> um, we those requirements are pretty pretty broad there. Um, some things that like we've looked at in the past, we've had people develop like contribution badges. Um, I've seen, um, there was like a, an on-chain wallet function that was supporting DAO. So, I mean, it's really been kind of all over the map. Um, so as long as it's like innovative and expanding functionality, then then we're into it. Um, I have a question and maybe, uh a suggestion to follow on on Seon's uh, question. So one question, I, I wasn't like with like a technical workshop, um, maybe Mark or Paul would be able to answer. Like, will we have a technical workshop next week? Because I 
think maybe it would be cool or is there a plan so for that? you cut out for me just a little bit did you ask about a technical workshop yeah, like basically if, if there will be like a technical workshop or the documentation will be uh, like from the GitHub or, or other resources. We we can certainly yeah, set something up. Yeah. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, Ash. No, I, I thought I did. Um... We, we could definitely look into a technical workshop. I think it would be quite useful for people that started, that would like to start commencing with bounties. Um, we'd like to flesh out with that idea more. So what we'll do is we'll uh, work with Ashley and work with the Meta's team and see if we can get something sorted for next week. Although I must say, we've got a lot of workshops coming along next week. So I do hope we can slot it in for everyone. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely look into it. Cool. And maybe the, the, the suggestion, I had in mind is this is going to have so many DAOs on it. Um, something that could be cool is to data visualization for the DAOs that exist on Metis, maybe to integrate them to something like DeepDAO, which actually is also going to have, uh, I think, a workshop in in next week. So then maybe that could be a good idea to explore as well. For, for participants. Sure thing. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I think it seems like uh, that, that would be everything. Um, I would just like to reiterate, um, of course, like Ashley said, we have two bounties available for people who meet certain requirements that MES expects. So, um, of course, we're in a warm-up engine, warm engine at the moment. So for all the Koala hackers uh, in this call right now or uh, watching this via YouTube, you basically have one week to start hacking. Right? So this is actually your cue and your opportunity to start to form teams and, and start uh, working on ideas right now as uh, bounties are available. And so um, you're free to start whenever, you're free to coordinate via the Discord. So uh, I would also like to alert you that we have another work, we'll, we'll, we'll be having workshops all week next week. And our next workshop will be on Tuesday with Cryptos, Crypto Sat uh, with Yan. So be mindful of where we'll be, at, where we'll be communicating um, our projects uh doing workshops so we'll be communicating by discord and twitter uh so keep an eye out on that and we're releasing more bounties and announcing more bounties through these workshops so basically there's kind of two things you guys can get uh, get started going once again is start working on bounties and keep an eye out for uh with uh future workshops in preparation for the in real life hack our uh, next week starting friday so keep that in mind um We'd like to thank you once again, Ashley, for coming along and presenting this workshop. I think you've done an incredible job. I think you're an amazing communicator, very clear, concise, very fluent. So uh, thank you so much. And I think everyone can agree with that as well. Yeah, thanks thank a lot. Thank you so yes. much. It was great. Thanks, y'all. It was yeah. great to great to chat with you tonight. I appreciate it very much. Good luck to everybody. Thanks, thank Ashley. You. One last thing, if everyone's still here. Um, in the next few hours, we will be making an announcement of where you can go next to actually get more bounty information. So we'll make an announcement by the announcement channel. So keep out for that uh, as well. So um, thank you. And if anyone doesn't have any questions, and I think this workshop will be wrapped up. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yep. Have a good thanks, day. Man. Bye.